ever wanted to fight against hundreds of Obsidian Sanctuary zombies without even a scratch to your health? Or perhaps you want to one-hit Zealots with your fist? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, today in the remaking Hypixel Skyblock saga, I've added all 52 Hypixel Skyblock island spawning mobs. And that's not even all. In today's episode, episode 5, we'll also be taking a look at Magic Find, launch pads, updates to coins, and much more. If this is the first episode you're seeing, in the top right of screen right now, there'll be a card which will take you to episode 1 and let you watch the whole series in order, taking you back to this spot. Make sure you watch until the end of this video for two very exciting announcements about the project. But without further ado, let's get into all the progress I've made this month. Let's begin with the mobs. You'll have to try ignore that new sidebar for now. So what do we already have? Well, any mob that spawned in will automatically be converted into the custom health and damage system. But apart from that, they're extremely weak as they have the same health as vanilla, and ultimately they can't be customised into awesome mobs like you see on Hypixel Skyblock. So our first step is giving them an actual level, as right now, as you can see, it just shows a question mark. And just like that, I've made it so if you summon a mob, I can use this portal cooldown value to set any level I like. This is purely cosmetic, but using vanilla commands, we can change their health, damage and name as well. By doing this, we're already sung to form some new mobs. However, there are a couple of problems that we'll need to fix. First of all, if the mob has a bow, such as the skeletons which spawn back here in the high level area, their bows will just deal normal damage rather than custom damage we set. The reason for this being, I haven't actually added bows into the damage system, despite getting my subscribers last episode to create them for me. So let's do that quickly. Making arrows deal custom damage is surprisingly hard, because arrows travel so fast that by the time you detect what they're going to hit, they've already despawned. Luckily, I had a super big brain on how to fix this though, giving them piercing. Piercing is the crossbow enchantment that lets arrows travel through the entity they hit, which means I can actually detect the arrow. Then, after I've detected it, I can damage the mob it hits correctly, and then kill the arrow. This means that the player won't actually notice the piercing. Putting this all into practice, as you can see, the skeleton shots now pack much more of a punch, and I can actually deal some decent damage with my bows. Our second challenge before adding brand new mobs is right now, these mobs just drop ordinary mob drops. Obviously, you probably know that Skyblock mobs drop their own unique items and armors, but what some of you may not have considered is that they don't only change this. Hypixel also make it so each mob drops a different amount of common drops. For example, the baby magma cubes which spawn by the fortress drop 0 to 1 magma cream, whereas the big ones out in the open drop 1 to 3. These common drops are such an issue as the wiki doesn't actually say how much each mob drops. Luckily though, rather than having to manually test every single mob myself to work out how much they drop, I have wonderful beta testers who volunteered to do it for me. More specifically, Big thank you to Pink, Everpig, Dark Theme, and It's Maxim Craft for helping especially. So after pulling all the information together about all the mobs, with the only exceptions being the bosses, slayer mobs, and sea creatures which we'll do in later episodes, I used the information to create my own loot tables using Mizode's online loot table generator. With these, we have all we need to create the custom mobs. So I'll be right back. Here we are a couple days later, and they're all done. There's a lot I wanted to do this episode, so I won't be making them naturally spawn in yet. So for now I've created custom spawn eggs for each one. If I place a couple of these down, as you can see they deal the exact same damage, have the same health, drop the same drops, and if the mob has a custom design, such as the watchers or lapis zombies, they also look the same. The only thing left to do with these guys is give them custom AI, such as sneaky creepers going invisible, and rare mob drops. Rare mob drops will actually need a completely different system, as they can be affected by custom enchantments like luck, and drop chances can be completely changed based on what we're going to be starting next, magic find. To recreate magic find, first of all I needed to add it to the outdated profile menu, along with the sea creature chance and pet luck items. Completely off topic, but while I was at it I also added the taming item to the skills menu, for when we get around to adding skills that is. Anyway, 
We need a way to detect when the player kills a specific mob, such as the Lapis Zombie, which I'm going to be using as my test subject while making this. There is a built-in scoreboard that can be used to detect whenever a player kills a mob, such as a zombie, but the mob is already dead by the time this can be detected, which means we'll have no way of knowing if it was our Lapis Zombie or just an ordinary zombie. So instead, I'm going to use advancements to detect if I've killed a mob. I'm sure most of you are thinking right now, Blue, why would you use an advancement, you idiot? But there's actually a very good reason. If I go onto an advancement generator, there's a specific advancement that is achieved when killing a mob. However, what's different about this one though, is I can actually specify what MBT the mob must have for the advancement to be unlocked. This means I can make it only successful when they kill a zombie with the name Lapis Zombie. When it's successful, I've also made it run a function that just says hello and then instantly removes the advancement from them again. This means it will run every time they kill a Lapis Zombie and not just the first time. From here on out, it's pretty simple. Inside our function, I simply work out the player's chance of getting Lapis Armor, which is the base chance, which for Lapis Armor is 5%, and then I times that by the percentage magic find. Then I check if the player was successful in getting the drop, and if they were, I play the sound, put the rare drop message in chat, and then choose one of the four random arm pieces to be dropped onto the ground. If they weren't successful, it simply does nothing and lets the player pick up their common drops. So, as you can see right now, my magic score is just 10, and I'm not really getting anything at all. But if I change this to a much higher value, say 500, you can see immediately that I'm getting much more rare drops. I'll have to manually do this for each mob that has a rare drop attached to them, which is about 20 mobs, but I'll do that another time. For now, I have something else in mind. As you know if you watched episode 2 of the series, I've already added damage icons for when the player deals damage to a mob. However, I actually forgot to do a similar icon for when the player's hurt. It didn't take long before I added these to the game, but while doing this, it reminded me that the colour isn't always grey. Fire damage, poison, and wither all have their own colours, so be right back while I add those. It should now work, so let's give it a try. Yep, poison now makes me dark green. Wither now makes me black. And if I'm burning or in lava, it should now turn gold, as you can see. Now all of those work, but you may have noticed that fire and lava doesn't deal the same amount of damage it does on Hypixel. On their version, fire deals 5 damage and lava deals 20, no matter what your defense is. This is what probably lots of you know as true damage, and to achieve this, coincidentally, we're also going to have to use advancements. I absolutely love advancements, they're so much more efficient than using commands to detect things, and you can do so much that you couldn't even do without them, so if you're getting into commands I highly recommend you look into them. I love them so much, I might even do a video on my second channel about them, but more on the second channel at the end of this video. Anyway, be right back while I quickly code in this true damage. Hey everyone, Blue from the future here. Very quickly before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers this year, and although you may not think your sub makes a difference, it really, really, really does. The type of content I make takes a long time to work on. So if you enjoy what I do, it would mean the literal world to me if you could subscribe right now. If you think your friends could be interested in this remake, you could also share it with them to help us battle the almighty YouTube algorithm. Anyway, back to the video, I hope you're enjoying so far. There we go, it now works! Let me show you. As you can see right now, I have no armour on, and fire is dealing 5 HP and lava is dealing 20. And if I put on full superior, get flexed on, I still damage the same amount. Cool. I'll also be able to use this system when adding Sven bosses, as if you don't know, they deal true damage as well. Next, let's talk about this updated sidebar that you've already caught a glimpse of. There's two main changes that you can see. Number one, the colours changed. The money was red before when it should have been gold, and before all of the text was your island's colour rather than white. I hadn't done this because I wanted to, but rather I just didn't know how to make it white. But luckily the talented Paradox subject on my Discord showed me how. Then, number two, the most exciting part, the sidebar now has your location. To do this, I first had to go onto real skyblock and copy down the coordinates of every single boundary. Then using this, I could create a command that sets the player's location score to a specific value depending on what area they're in. And finally, 
I detect to see if the player's scores changed, and if it has, I refresh the sidebar to say the correct location. Luckily, most of the boundaries were just straight lines, so it wasn't too tricky, except for the park, which I had to detect the biome the player was in, in order to see which area they were in. This may all seem like quite a lot of work just for a location on the sidebar, however, this is actually much more useful than just that. By tracking which location the player is in, I can now run location-specific commands. For example, in the flower shop commands which run if a player is in the flower shop, it detects a player standing on an end portal frame and sends them to the canvas room. Whereas, if it detects you're in the canvas room, it does the opposite. Similarly, going through the end portal in the village takes you to the private islands, whereas if you do the same thing but in a wizard tower, it just tells you coming soon. This means that the world will be very efficient and will only run commands if it needs to. When you enter a new location, it also updates your spawn point to the correct place. So for example, entering the gold mine and if I kill myself now, it'll take me to the gold mine spawn point. Whereas if I leave back to the coal mines and kill myself, it'll take me to the village spawn point. As you can see, unlike Hypixel Skyblock, you don't have to use the launch pads. When I implement Aspect of the End or other methods of movement, you could travel here using those, whereas on Hypixel, if you do that you can end up on a glitched island with no functionality. Speaking of launch pads though, I think it would be the perfect time to add them so the beta testers can actually visit these islands without having to go into admin mode. These were pretty simple to do. First, I just summon an armor stand with the perfect motion to get them right to the other launch pad. Then, I make the player spectate this armor stand so they smoothly follow its path. And then, when the armor stand lands on the other side, I kill it and teleport the player to the island spawn point. As I said, pretty simple, but still very time consuming to do this for everything. So, be right back while I do every single launch pad. With the power of editing, every single launch pad now works. One in specific I really want to show you is gold mines to deep caverns. As I previously mentioned, the deep caverns is the only place I need to have two copies of because when you actually arrive there, it completely changes. But with the launch pad, it's a completely seamless transition. Furthermore, I even tried my best to make it a seamless transition when the player just flies there. Then when I'm finished, I can simply fly away and it'll switch back to the real islands. Not to show off, but I'm a big fan of this. I think it's pretty cool. Next up on the to-do list, the world was actually slightly outdated as they've redone some buildings and areas since I downloaded the map. So, let's have a bit of a quick fire round. Number one, I've added all of the entities to the world that were missing, such as item frames, items, armor stands, etc. The hardest part of all was the runic pedestal here, which took me literally forever. A huge shout out to Ronok on my Discord who created the list of entities for me. Number two, I added the bazaar area, as well as the bazaar NPC, which obviously isn't functional yet. Number three, the redstone house seemed to have a slight redesign, so I did that. Number four, when Pets V2 dropped, this house made a complete change, so I had to redo it. But by this point, I was tired of manually building things, so instead, I re downloaded the map and used structure blocks to move it into the actual world. I also added B, Zog, George, and Cat. Number five, I added the Lapis Miner. Although this isn't a new NPC, so I think I must have just forgotten to add this back when I did NPCs in episode three. And finally number 6, I added the catacomb slash dungeon area in the coal mines, as my version previously was just a cave there. I also used structure blocks to add this, as it would have taken way too long to do it by hand, but I still had to manually add all the NPCs back. Another thing I made some changes to was the coins. First of all, I made it so you lose half your coins when dying, which was simply done by dividing their coin score by 2 and then reloading the sidebar. and. Previously I had the system set your coins to something, whereas in the future we'll most likely want to add coins to your purse. So I created three new commands that can be activated using slash trigger, set coins, reset coins and add coins, which will do as you would expect. I also added a teleport book command to get access to this book, which you guessed it, <laughs> teleports you to places. And to finish off this video, not long after releasing episode 4, I released the first ever beta test version, and my beta testers managed to find a ton of bugs for me to fix. Since then, I fixed over 42 of them, and although I won't be showcasing all of them, some of those bugs were more like features. For example, any item, whether it was dropped from a mob, block, from the creative inventory, given using commands, or from the crafting table, now has the rarity in the lore. Furthermore, if it's a brewing ingredient, it will also have the label saying so. If 
you want to see all of the other 41 bugs that were fixed, you can. A couple of weeks ago, I created a second channel specifically for additional Skyblock content. I think this clip from the welcome video perfectly sums up what the channel is about. Trying to fit an entire month of work into just 10 minutes ultimately means I have to cut out in-depth explanations or showcases for the most part, but on this channel, I'll be able to put them here. All the main videos will still be on this channel, but if you just can't get enough of this series and you want to see more, then there's a card in the top right of your screen right now, or in the description for you to check out the channel if you like. But that's a wrap on episode 5. A huge thank you to my Lapis Lazuli patrons, Striker, ISB, Blue Block 6, Everpig, Kville, Verilan, Trey Selton, and to my Blue Dye patrons, 6 at 18, Super Saliti, I don't have a clue how to say that, Is This Marvin, Tat P, Spicy MC, Topaz, Sim Van Der Veld, and Deity. If you would like to become a beta tester and play the map before the public releases, you can now instantly do so by pledging on my Patreon. The reason I set up the Patreon isn't because I'm some money hungry person, but instead it's because I'm turning down so many commissions so I can upload regular content for you guys, and the Patreon's a perfect way for me to regain some of the money that I'm missing out on. So to everyone who has and is considering pledging, I thank you all so much for your generosity. If you want to see more remaking Hypixel Skyblock, make sure you give this video a like, and leave a comment on what you'd like to see next video. And other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!